Among women who have attained menopause, 45% say they feel their menopausal symptoms have had a negative impact on their work and 33% feel less outgoing in social situations. Sex is off the menu for about 51% of them and 38% of their partners say they feel helpless when it comes to supporting their loved ones through menopause. Three quarters of women in United Kingdom say that the menopause has caused them to change their life and more than half say it has had a negative impact on their lives. And even though these numbers are for United Kingdom, I'm pretty certain they are going to be more or less the same all across the world. Namaskar, hello, welcome to my channel. My name is Pritha. I'm a practicing gynecologist in London, but I am originally from India and I did my medical training there. Today's topic, as you know, is menopause and HRT or hormone replacement therapy. Now, menopause is something all women experience. It is the time when our ovaries stop producing eggs and as a result, levels of the hormones estrogen and progesterone massively drop as most of their supply come from the ovaries. Estrogen is the component that is responsible for our female characteristics, so to say, including the functioning of periods and the ability to be pregnant. So when ovaries stop working, the body doesn't produce estrogen as much and reacts as a result. But menopause does not happen overnight. It can take months or even years for the ovaries to gradually phase out of action till it finally stops. This entire period is called perimenopause, which can be marked with erratic and heavy periods and onset of symptoms that women often refer to as the change. One can still get pregnant when perimenopausal, so those who are sexually active should carry on using contraceptives for two years after the last period if they are less than 50 years old and one year if they are above 50. Menopause is the time when ovaries retire once and for all and periods completely stop along with the ability to get pregnant. Usually this happens between 45 to 55 years, though ever so often we come across exceptions. Now menopause is not a disease, it's important to remember this. It is an altered physiological state and it is a personal experience. However, sometimes women do struggle with decreasing levels of estrogen in their bodies and may need medical assistance. So what changes am I talking about? Hot flushes for one is very common affecting about 75% women, that is three out of four. Then we have night sweats, sleeplessness, loss of skin elasticity, mood changes, body ache, vaginal dryness, diminished libido and problems with urine leaks. The duration and severity vary immensely and can cause massive distress to the woman. There are other menopausal changes though, which can cause long-term damage to a woman's health. Estrogen, in addition to its millions of functions, also helps to keep bones dense and strong. So after menopause, that essentially stops and bones become thin and brittle, called osteoporosis. We have all heard of elderly female relatives who fractured their bones after trivial falls and now you know the reason why. There is also some evidence to suggest that estrogen protects our hearts, making menopausal women vulnerable to heart diseases. It's quite rare to hear of premenopausal women who are dying or who have died of heart attack. Now, do we need to do anything to formally diagnose menopause? Most doctors will rely on symptoms and period pattern to ascertain if menopause has really taken place. Occasionally, a blood test to check levels of a hormone called FSH can be done, but it is not completely reliable. So in short, medical history matters more. So now that we have established menopause, what can we do about it if we decide to do something about it? It goes without saying that lifestyle modification can prove to be beneficial here too, like most of the conditions affecting the body. A healthy diet rich in calcium and vitamin D should be followed. Calcium and vitamin D help to keep bones strong and can also be taken as supplements, though no matter how much we consume, we cannot replace what is already lost. We can, however, try not to lose more bones. Age is not an excuse for not exercising and the more active one is, the less the chances of developing osteoporosis. Smoking also increases the risk of osteoporosis and should be avoided. Alcohol consumption, it goes without saying, needs to be within moderation as it can make 
hot flushes and mood changes worse. If any medication is required, the most common form of prescribed treatment to address menopausal symptoms is hormone replacement therapy, the HRT. The hormones estrogen is really the one that is needed to relieve the symptoms. And there are various ways to deliver it to the body. It can be ingested in the form of a pill, through the skin using a patch or gel or under the skin using a tiny implant. Estrogen, however, cannot be given unopposed if the woman still has a womb as it can thicken the lining of the womb, which can potentially turn cancerous. In those cases, progesterone needs to be added to protect the womb and that can be introduced to the body through pill, patch or even a coil that is put inside the womb. The coil is also a contraceptive and is an excellent choice for women who are perimenopausal and can technically still get pregnant. I would like to mention here that even though both HRT and contraception can contain estrogen and progesterone, they are not one and the same. Their formulations differ. Now, as a form of HRT, estrogen sometimes is only applied in the vaginal areas by a pessary that goes inside or a cream that is applied on the skin. This helps with vaginal dryness, soreness and problems with urinary tract. And for these, added progesterone is usually not required as the estrogen doesn't disseminate all over the body. Women who have had hysterectomy, that is who had their wombs removed surgically, do not require progesterone as part of HRT. Now, menopause also results in drop of testosterone levels and occasionally it is also added to HRT. There is another type of HRT called tibolone, which mimics the action of estrogen, progesterone and testosterone. But it can only be given if the last period was more than a year ago. Now, let's quickly go through what good and bad can happen when we take HRTs. In the short term, it helps to relieve hot flushes and mood changes, can improve sex life and reduce vaginal dryness. More importantly, from a medical point of view, in the long term, it helps to protect the bones and the heart. So why has HRT earned such a bad rep? Now, in the 1990s, two massive clinical trials were conducted. In the States, a clinical randomized trial called Women's Health Initiative was started, while UK conducted an observational questionnaire study called Million Women Study. Both these studies published the, some of their results in early 2000s, around 2003-2004, and that suggested that extended use of HRT may increase risk of heart disease and breast cancer. The results of these studies were widely publicized, creating panic among both doctors and patients. Few years ago, however, the full results of Women's Health Initiative was published and it revealed that increased risk of breast cancer was only found in those who had taken HRT before entering the study and that there was no increase in heart disease among women who start HRT within 10 years of attaining menopause. A large control study done in Denmark in 2012 also suggested that women who take HRT for 10 years immediately after menopause have lower chance of dying from heart disease. These data, however, received very little media attention and HRT is still often misunderstood. Now, according to a Women's Health Initiative, it is not advisable for women over 60 years to start HRT anew as it may increase the risk of breast cancer and heart disease. But there is no fixed duration to be on treatment and who, women who are already on HRT do not necessarily need to stop when they turn 60. In women with no womb, that is who had hysterectomy, estrogen when used alone is associated with little or no increased risk of breast cancer. When used along with progesterone, it can slightly increase the risk of breast cancer. However, the risk is higher the longer one stays on treatment and reduces drops once it is stopped. Individual risk of breast cancer also needs to be considered and that includes taking into account the person's body weight and family history. HRT when taken as pills can increase the risk of blood clots in legs and lungs and stroke though the overall risk for those under 60 is still small. And again, individual risk depends on self and family history. Judicious use of HRT can instill confidence among both user and prescriber. And the key points we are taught as doctors are to 
ensure that HRT is taken for the right reasons, that is to relieve menopausal symptoms and protect bones and hearts, that it is taken at the lowest effective dose and only for as long as is necessary, and that people who are on HRT get medical assessment at least once a year. Women who for various reasons cannot take HRT seek help from other sources. One option is to try medicines that do not contain hormones but can be used to address specific symptoms like hot flushes or low mood, like antidepressants. Complementary therapies like aromatherapy, herbal treatments and homeopathy are quite popular nowadays and may help. More research, however, is required before they can be widely recommended and most practitioners of modern medicine, like myself, will not be able to comment on their safety profile and efficacy. If you do want to use them, they need to be taken under guidance of practitioners trained in that particular field. You may have also heard of something called bioidentical hormones. They are claimed to be identical to the estrogen and progesterone that the body produces and are made by compounding chemists. There is, however, no evidence that they are better or safer than traditional HRT. And please remember that they are not regulated by Drug Regulatory Authority of UK. And as far as I know, not in India and USA either. Now, I realize I've put a lot of information out there and it is natural to feel confused. In the video description below, you will find links to all the resources that should help you in decision making. Please remember, not every woman will suffer the same with menopause and not everyone will require medication or will even seek medical help. But if you do, there are options available. I hope you found this useful and that you will like, subscribe, you know the drill. Thank you so much. Stay safe. Bye.